enough is enough. Now, enough is enough. How many times have you heard this phrase? When I was a kid, me and my brother would hear this all the time. It was usually at the dinner table, and we were horsing around, and mom or dad would say, now boys, you're at the dinner table. Enough is enough. We would then proceed to hold our breaths, try not to laugh, but inevitably, one of us would let out a snicker, and the whole process would start over again. It was like we could not stop the process, even if we wanted to. This could go on for hours. What our parents were really saying is, it's fine to have a good time and enjoy yourself. But what you've enjoyed and experienced to this point is enough, and now it's become a distraction. My brother and I wanted m more, though. We, were, we never thought enough fun was ever enough fun. As an adult, I am no stranger to wanting more, just as when I was a kid. In my mind, enough is never enough. I have many cliches that I use that at times draws me off, a co off course. For example, if something is worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Or, if a little is good, a lot is better. Now these statements lead me to one place and one place only, dependence upon myself. Why do I need more than enough? This is because if I have more than enough, I will never want for anything. I will never have to depend on somebody else. I will never have to worry about having what I want. I will never be wrong. These statements, although reassuring, are not necessarily a good path to go down. The idea of self-reliance is fine when it comes to not forcing others to wait on you hand and foot, but the problem is that it takes God out of the equation. So, when is enough really enough? The real answer to that question, as my oldest daughter regularly says, is Jesus. In other words, I have no idea what the answer is, but Jesus is the answer to everything. This is what she uses to get, this is what she uses as a get out of jail free card when she is put on the spot usually by Paul. I actually believe this is absolutely the correct answer in this situation. So let's put God back in this situation and ask ourselves the question again. Is enough enough? It says in Philippians 4:19, "My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory." This is not a get out of jail free answer. It is actually what God said he will do. So yes, enough is enough. What God gives you will always be enough. Will it make sense? No, not always. Will you be able to always see how God is going to work it out? No, many times probably not. Can you imagine being a disciple with Jesus and there being over 5,000 people to feed and a little boy comes up with five loaves, two fish, and says, you can have this. Jesus says that will be perfect. The doubt in the disciples could probably be seen all over them. I could see Jesus looking back at them and say, enough is enough. As a disciple, I would have been just like them and say it makes a lot more sense just to send them to town because there is no way this is going to be enough. Jesus just reiterated, enough is enough. And guess what? It just so happened that not only was enough enough, Enough was more than enough. The disciples could not imagine this working out, but Jesus knew all of their needs would be met. So remember, as Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. When I worry if enough will be enough, I cannot lean on my understanding. I cannot worry if I have enough money, if I'm strong enough, if my health will last long enough, if I have enough food, if I am enough, or if I have had enough fun. I have to trust in what God has told me and that he will do what he says. With God, enough will always be enough. Hey, Chris, I think that's true, and I like your reference back to the past because I can so remember saying, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Actually, you do remember one expression is you've gone too far, yes. so there's a lot of those expressions. But let me ask you a question. Everything that we want or everything we think we need or all those expressions are born on the basis of some kind of fear. Like you said, there's a fear of not enough. 
Okay, so where do you think that that comes from? Where do you think it originates? Well, I mean, obviously that fear comes from the flesh is what it comes from. And it comes from, um, I think it can come from experiences. And um, I think... I think that fear also comes from selfishness and narcissism when you only think about yourself and you're thinking about what you want and 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 when your mind's not in the right place that's when that that fear in in my mind that's when that fear um, kind of sneaks in is when you're you're not thinking about you're not number one you're not thinking about others and number two and mainly you're not thinking about God and what he wants and what his plan is and what his purpose is okay do you remember a time when you were um, in a Christian school and or actually in a church and we had a lot of these friends? You had a lot of friends and some of them were a lot more wealthy than we were. Of course, as a pastor, you're not that wealthy. But do you ever think that influenced in looking around and saying, hey, they have this, they have that, I don't have this? I, I think definitely when you compare yourself to others, that creates that sense of that envy and that sense of oh they've got it better than me or they've got it easier than me or or whatever you're attributing it to um, that it would I would be so much better if I had what they had mm-hmm. um, and so I think that's I mean I think that's a very dangerous spot to be in too is is that is when you start comparing yourself to others and what others have and and what you perceive others to have um, attributing that to um, the lack of there being fear, of not being fearful. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had these things, I wouldn't be afraid of this. If I had mm-hmm. that, if I had what they did, I wouldn't be afraid. But at the end of the day, when you really look into it and look into what uh, things people have and what they have, and um, that's not what eliminates the fear. Because there's, I'm, I, I can think of many examples of very wealthy people who are extremely fearful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. So, so if if you were to say to a person, okay, here's a person that has this fear that that there won't be enough. Okay, and you say it's Jesus is the answer, as Max says. Yes, I agree. <laughs> How do you tell them to apply that to their heart, to their thinking, because their thinking is generating the fear, and of course. Fear generated in our mind is from imagination because there's no reality of fear. So what do you tell them? How do you tell them to go about doing that? I think for me what it is, it's important to stop the process while it's occurring and slow it down as, as soon as you notice it and and identify it. Oh, I'm being fearful. I'm worried my bank account is too low. I saw the account and it's lower than I wanted it to be. And so, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, what if it keeps going down and what am I going to do? And that snowball starts. And um, I think it's important to stop that, 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 snowball, that snowball before it turns into an avalanche. Mm-hmm. Because once it turns into an avalanche, you get covered up and it's a lot harder to dig out. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I mean, I, for me, it's, it goes back to um, when I start feeling that anxiety or that fear, it goes back to prayer. It goes back mm-hmm. to uh, going back to prayer and reading the Word and saying, I mean, the scriptures that I gave that... that, that talk about how God is enough that God mm-hmm. will provide all your needs mm-hmm. um, and I mean honestly when you're fearful and um, stuff and what you're actually saying is I don't trust God mm-hmm. um, and it, when you put it in that context I'd never say I don't trust God I would say I'm scared I'm not going to have enough money but I, I still trust God which isn't a true statement no that's yeah. an oxymoron Yeah. so let me ask you a quick question was there ever anything you wanted that you didn't get Anything I ever wanted that I didn't get? Yes. Um, probably, I can't think of anything like super specific. Like some people probably have stories of, I wanted this for Christmas. I wanted a pu- yeah. puppy for Christmas, and I never got a puppy. Got no, I don't have anything like that specifically that that I can that comes to mind. Um, but what I can definitely say is, looking back, I absolutely there is not a single experience or situation i can think of where i didn't get what i needed yeah there 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 i mean i can't so when you talk about looking at that fear and looking at being fearful and stuff like that and i say and i said at the beginning that it was based on experiences and stuff like that 
it's not really even based on experience. It's fear is based on an imagination. Yeah. And because my experience is, is I've, I've always had enough, and it's just like the loaves and the fishes. Most of the time, I've had more than enough. So I need to ask you a question. Do you still have your watch? <laughs> I, I wish I did. I remember that story, but you no, know, I, I don't. I don't. I hope maybe Mom's got it somewhere in a box. <laughs> I told Chris, uh, Sarah and I, his mom, and I told Chris that if he scored three goals mm -hmm. in a single game playing soccer, because he loved soccer, that he would get a uh, swatch watch, swatch watch, a jelly swatch watch, a jelly swatch watch, <laughs> and you know what? The next game, he came up to the thing and he scored three goals, and it was like awesome. And he got his watch. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Chris. I think that, especially since talking to fathers out there and talking to men who feel responsible for their families and themselves, sometimes they get overwhelmed by the tomorrow of certain things. But like you said, Christ is our tomorrow, and He is enough. Absolutely. And I think, um, well, a lot of the world tells you you have to have a one-year plan, a three-year plan, a five-year plan, and a ten-year plan. Well, you don't have to have it all planned out. Yeah, that's just the Chinese. Yeah, it's not. You just you just have to you just have to know God's got a plan. Yeah, and and and, and trust, trust that, yep. and trust it. Not know it, but trust it, and trust that you don't have to know it, but Absolutely. trust it. All right, thanks, Chris. I think that's really going to minister to a lot of people. Thank you so much. You bet. Bye -bye. Thank you. Hey y'all, thanks for joining us for Around the Supper Table. At Sanctuary Family Farms, we want to be real. Whether that's through our blogs, daily verses, or even Nana's recipes, we want to share the messages that God has laid on each of our hearts. If you liked what you heard today or want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Sanctuary Family Farms or our website at www.sanctuaryfamilyfarms.com where we share our recipes and blogs and sell farm fresh beef and pork. We can't wait for you to join us again for next week's episode.